Hey guys, this is Austin. If you're looking for a laptop for back to school, I have a few options you might want to consider. Everything from $200 to over $1,000. First off, we have this 14-inch HP laptop. Now at first glance, it looks just a little bit old school. However, for a little bit over $200, there's a lot to like here. It has a solid selection of ports with VGA, Ethernet, HDMI, and three USB ports. Now what's a little bit weird with this guy is it is actually cooled by a fan. So a lot of the budget Intel laptops are fanless. However, this AMD option does have a fan, but thankfully it's not too loud. This guy is powered by a quad-core AMD E2 processor with four gigabytes of RAM and 32 gigs of eMMC storage. Now that processor is not going to be incredibly powerful. It's actually very similar to what's inside the Xbox One and PS4, although obviously in this case, a little bit slower. But the important thing is, it's going to be totally fine for basic usage, and again, this is $200. That AMD processor is a little bit unusual on budget laptops, but it's not that bad. So when it comes to more heavy usage such as gaming, it's not going to be great, but for normal stuff like watching video, it's not bad. Hey guys, this is Austin. It has been nearly four years since the original Nintendo 2DS came out, What's also pretty solid is the display. So for $220, we're getting a full 1080p IPS panel. Now yes, it is not quite as bright as I would like. However, for this price, this is about as good as it gets. It might not be a powerhouse, but if you're just looking for a budget laptop to get the job done, this is definitely worth considering. If you've got a little bit more budget to work with, you may want to consider picking up the ASUS VivoBook E403. At just a little bit under $400, while it's not a huge jump over the HP, there are a lot of little things that definitely add up. So I actually did a video on this last year, but it's still pretty much totally up to date. And what's nice about this guy is that for only a little bit more than the HP, you're getting something that feels a lot nicer. Now yes, it is still plastic, but it's thinner, it's lighter, and it just feels like a more premium laptop. This guy also has a solid selection of ports with an HDMI, a USB 3, USB Type-C, which is nice. And if you flip it over, we're also going to get an additional USB Type-A as well as an SD card reader. While this might not be the most powerful laptop in the world, it can definitely get the job done. So inside, it's rocking a quad-core Intel Pentium processor, 4 gigabytes of memory, as well as 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage. You can do a bit of very light gaming on this guy, but it really is meant for more normal usage, and for that, it does a good job. So it also has a solid 1080p panel with good speakers, solid trackpad, keyboard. There's really no one part of this laptop that falls apart. Moving on, we have the Lenovo Z50. So this is the middle ground between a budget laptop and something that can handle gaming. At $370, this guy is all about cramming the maximum amount of specs into the cheapest possible computer. Now, of course, if you guys want more information, I did a full video on this very recently. In fact, most of these laptops I've already done full videos on, but there's a lot of interesting quirks with this guy. This is the biggest laptop here with a 15.6 inch display, but that's also probably its biggest weakness, as it is only a 1366 by 768 resolution. On such a big screen, it just doesn't look great. And on top of that, it's a fairly low-end TN panel, which means the color and especially viewing angles and contrast could be a lot better. The upside is that it has an AMD FX7500 quad-core APU, 8GB of RAM, and Radeon R7 integrated graphics. Now yes, it's not going to crush Crisis at 4K, but for $400, you're going to be hard-pressed to find a more powerful gaming laptop. With a game like Rocket League, we're able to get pretty solid performance. So playing at 768p, which is the max resolution of the screen, on quality settings, we're getting right between 40 to 50 frames per second. I can actually hit the ball. <laughs> I totally just missed the ball like twice on camera. That's totally gotta go in. It's definitely not perfect, but if you're just looking for pure bang for the buck performance, you should check it out. Stepping up the budget a little bit, we have the Lenovo Y700 at $750. What I like about this is that even though it's a gaming laptop, it's actually nicely well-rounded. With a 14-inch display, it's still somewhat portable, but you have plenty of room for gaming, and I actually really like the look of it. A lot of gaming laptops can be a little bit over the top, but with this, it's actually a fairly subtle design. Inside, it has fairly powerful specs, with an Intel Core i7-6700HQ quad-core processor, 16 gigabytes of DDR4 memory, as well as dedicated Radeon R9-370M graphics. Jumping into a game like Overwatch, this is totally playable. So on 1080p, on medium settings, we're getting anywhere between 40 to 60 frames depending on how much action is going on, but regardless, this is very much playable. This guy also has a 256 gigabyte M2 SSD paired with a one terabyte hard drive. And when you put it all together, not only is this a solid laptop for taking with you every day, but it can definitely handle some gaming. Moving away from gaming, we have the LG Gram 13 at $1,000. So there's a lot to like with this guy. It is hands down my favorite Ultrabook right now. One of the main reasons for that is that while it's not only super light, but it also has very, very small bezels on the display, making this incredibly portable. The Gram comes in 13, 14, and 15 inch screen sizes, but regardless, you're getting a really nice looking 1080p IPS panel. 
color, contrast, and especially viewing angles that are going to be on point. And most of them, this 13 inch included, also come with a touchscreen. I've said it a lot of times before, but with Windows 10, a touchscreen laptop just makes sense. Specs are fairly standard for an Ultrabook. It has a Core i5 7200U processor, 8GB of RAM, and a 256GB SSD. This of course is not a gaming PC, but it's pretty snappy for normal use. Now on top of the screen being nice, it's also outfitted with a nice keyboard, and especially a solid trackpad with Windows Precision drivers, and this model also comes with a fingerprint sensor. The real star of the show here though is battery life. So LG claims that it can last up to 15 hours on a charge, and that's not crazy. With that 60 watt hour battery, I have never killed it in a single day. So if you're looking for a laptop that not only has solid battery life, but it's also super portable, check out the LG Gram. In the same category, we have the brand new Microsoft Surface Pro, which ranges anywhere from $800 to a lot, lot more. So this might seem like a little bit of a weird choice, but I actually think the Surface would make a lot of sense for back to school. So yes, it is definitely a tablet, and because of that, it's going to be nice and portable, but once you put the actual type cover on it, this is not a bad laptop replacement. You are getting incredibly nice hardware here. Everything's made out of metal, especially once you pull out the type cover and pop the kickstand, what you're seeing here is that there's a ton of flexibility. It is really, really well built. This guy comes in quite a few different configurations, but the one I have here is the mid-spec model with a Core i5, 8 gigs of RAM, and 256 gigs of SSD storage. Now what's cool is the Core i5 here is actually going to be fanless. So not only is it going to be nice and quiet, but on top of that, it has crazy battery life, 13 and a half hours. It also has the best screen here with a 12.3 inch pixel sense display, which of course is not only touchscreen, but it also supports the new Surface Pen. And it also has some cool other features like facial login with Windows Hello. And of course you get the whole thing in a tablet package. So yes, it can be a little bit pricey, especially once you add the actual keyboard, which is basically not even an option, but the Surface Pro is definitely worth a look if you're going back to school. As always, I'll have links to all of these laptops in the description, and I've also done dedicated videos on a lot of them, so feel free to go check those out, and I'm curious, which one of these laptops would you pick up? Let me know in the comments below, and I will catch you on the next one.